Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Howdy everyone and welcome back to Ask Rob and Rob, where you ask us questions and we give you answers. Same format every week, you kind of know it by now. And also the way you get involved is pretty easy too if you've listened to a few of these. But we'll remind you just in case. Yeah, you should know this, but it's 013808 0035. That's 013808 0035. Leave us a voicemail or go over to thepropertyhub.net slash ask. Leave us a message that way instead. Okay, let's have a listen to our first question today. This one is from Steve in Bristol. Hey guys, uh, it's Steve from Bristol. I'm just calling and wondering if, if it's possible to buy your primary residence through a limited company or not. That's the structure I'd like to have, but I don't know whether you can actually still get the stamp duty savings if you buy it through a limited company. Okay, thanks very much. Bye. Okay, Steve, is it possible? Yes, but probably not easy because most limited company mortgage lenders are probably only going to want to lend to you for investment purposes and not allow you to live there. So there's probably going to be a restricted range of financing for you. However, the bigger question is why would you want to? The advantage that you seem to have spotted here is a stamp duty saving, but actually swerving the extra stamp duty is not that easy. There's a common misconception that if you buy a property through a company and you already own a property, then you won't have to pay the extra 3% stamp duty for additional properties. And that makes intuitive sense because it's like, well, I am me, I've got a property, my company is someone else, it doesn't have a property, therefore you don't have to pay the extra. Sadly, doesn't work that way. When the need to pay the extra stamp duty is assessed, they look at the directors of that company and look at any properties that they've got. So unfortunately, they get you either way. It would be a bit too much of an easy swerve if you could just set up a new company every time you wanted to buy a property and the Chancellor and co have anticipated that one and shut it down. So maybe there are other benefits for you buying your primary residence through a company that I'm not aware of, but stamp duty, sadly, is not one of them. So that was a tax question in from Steve and now we have a taxing question in from Haseem. Sorry, everyone. Hi, Rob and Rob. It's Haseem here. First of all, massive thank you for all the free knowledge. I learn a lot from you. I have been into property investment for two years and own about three to four metro properties. There is still a lot of things which I think I should have known before I started, but I'm learning as I go along and I really appreciate the free knowledge. My question is around the extra 3% stamp duty. Now, as an investor, that is a big chunk of the money you outlay and the cost that has been added to us. However, I've been reading about it and I gather that this can be avoided for an individual or a company that owns more than 15 properties. If that is the case, I was thinking of buying properties in certain cheaper areas where I think there's potential, but do I make it the number of 15 properties and avoid the stamp duties, which would then help me when I'm buying more expensive properties around London and so area? Let me know if that is the case. And thank you once again for all the free knowledge. Well, Haseem, there's an incentive to get to 15 properties or more. No more nasty stamp duty. 3%. Why wouldn't you want to race to 15? Well, unfortunately, it's not going to do you any good. So there was a lot of talk when the stamp duty announcement was made that for limited companies with larger portfolios and the number 15 or 15 plus was touted round would mean that you would avoid stamp duty which seems a little unfair for the big investors getting away with it and the smaller investors having to pay the price but actually that wasn't the case and it turns out that everybody has to play stamp duty now there are people out there who say you can avoid it and there are creative schemes that they will sell and advise, and it's up to you and your level of risk, but personally, I like to play it safe. So, Hasim, if you keep doing your research, you will see people out there who say they've got a solution to this, but I'd tread carefully, because will they be there when the HMRC come knocking at your door to back you up? You might want to check on that if you do anything a little bit more creative. But for the majority of us, unfortunately, the answer is no. But there are things you can do to reduce your tax liabilities. And you should absolutely be doing that. So, it's been a long time since we mentioned it. But remember, there is Property Hub Tax out there to help and assist you. A huge list of people waiting to get onto that service. But if you're keen to check it out, then go to the Property Hub dot net forward slash tax where you can find out a little bit more about our amazing service there so we'll be back on thursday with the property podcast and we'll be answering more of your questions next tuesday in ask rob and rob until then bye-bye bye-bye, bye-bye.